I honestly, man, this is such a fascinating conversation. I, uh, I'm curious because we didn't even get into the question. <laughs> I like to ask people all the time, you know, if there, if there would be one thing that you would suggest that men, possibly even women, could do on a daily basis to ground themselves a little bit more, uh, to be a little bit more present in their lives, what would you suggest? Okay, how about three at the top of my head? Okay, let's do it. Num number one is in any and every moment, ask yourself, is this true right now? And very often I found with myself that whatever I'm trying to figure out, whatever I'm thinking, whatever's going on, it's either something from the past that is no longer going on at all and I no longer need to survive, or it's a fear or a fantasy from the future, or it's someone else's opinion. And right here and right now, it's simply not true. And man, game changer. I get my life back. I'm not trying to fix these things. And I'm here and able to take part in life rather than stepping back, trying to figure something out. So that's number one. Number two, and I guess for mine, it's it's in the moment rather than in the day. Number two is what I, I, I showed you last night is um, I used to be addicted to my thoughts and my second guessing and my fears and my fantasies um, and everything I was trying to fix. That didn't exist. And I needed a way of turning around and coming back here. And it was an addiction. And, you know, this is this is survival, breaking the old survival wiring. So as soon as I caught myself lost, lost in space, in the space between my years, then I had to learn to stop before I even get to the end of the sentence. Take a deep breath in. And as I breathe in, think, thank you for reminding me who I used to be. And it's used to be, so it's in the past. And as I breathe out, I take part with what's in front of me. So I can get present and connected, out of my head and fear, embodied and able to take part. And there is gratitude for who I used to be. Because all that thinking saved my life, but I'm no longer on the front line. So I need to acknowledge and honor that and not make um, an enemy of it and get present and connected. You know, like and almost to, to not necessarily invalidate those old feelings, recognize that they, they played, they played the part that they needed to play, but they're no longer, they're no longer either necessary, useful at this point, something like. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Number three for me, and I hope everyone's got one of these. Number three for me is I listen to my inner DJs. And my inner DJs <laughs> are generally playing a tune. And the tune is generally a message. Like if I listen to the words or the feeling of the tune or where the tune takes me or the attitude that I need to have. And if there isn't a tune, then it's like, look around. What is life telling me? What are the clues? What are the signs? What are the temptations? But what are the clues here? Because I believe, and maybe this is just me playing with life, but I believe that I'm Columbo and life <laughs> around <laughs> life around is giving me clues. I just need to see them and see whether it's true or not and see what's the same temptation and see what's the sign and move forward with that. And if I'm not looking, if I'm too busy surviving or with my head down or figuring things out, then life can't meet me. Nothing can meet me because I'm busy in my head. So I look for the clues. And very often the inner DJs really help with my attitude or they really let me reach inside so I know which attitude to use to relate outside. But it's all clues and I'm not a victim to any of this. And with the signs and the temptations, I feel that the reason I'm given temptations whether I fall for them or not, is so life knows how much I can take. And life knows not to give me more than I can take, but to give me enough so I can grow, so I'm stimulated. So that way, life's on my side and it can move me forward gently. Do you think the, the context of those clues that you see, like you see this as a positive clue, for instance, it has to do 
with like, I guess what I'm saying is do sometimes you see what you want to see? Like, because they're not obviously objective clues, but necessarily it's just helping you to articulate the things that you either want to know or feel like are true for you in that present moment. I guess in a way you're asking me is life like Facebook and Google that that it would feed back to me, <laughs> sort of like, but, but in a way that the, in a way that the advertisements were all blank and you just saw what you wanted to see in that moment based on where you were right then and there. Yeah, I believe that if I did, if I used them to justify myself, then I'd miss out on the whispering, and I might get a bit of a shout from life. And I might get a bit of a slap from life and it's going to keep knocking on my door until I finally listen. And the sooner I listen, the less it's going to stuff me up. Slap you around a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not bad for me when life brings things up that are uncomfortable. I believe that it's saying, here is your doorway. This is something you need to know yourself with, just as we did while we were abroad. Know yourself here and include this or release this or whatever because when you have then it's no longer going to restrict you and there's so much more of you available to life and so much more of life available to you so it's all about more and the polite way the traditional way is hover above the pain don't go into it survive it and stay in that tension it's tension but i found to go in it and through it is to be liberated from it. And I also feel that it might not be that safe or as good a ride if it's done alone. So if you have a friend, um, people have coaches, therapists, whatever, the men's groups, the women's groups, things like that, people who are not only caring of you, but people who want the most off for you to have the most of your life beyond what they want from you. And very often people come to the men's groups um, because they can find out who they are, let go of who they no longer need to be and really make space for who they are. And no one has any designs on who they should be. We're in the question together rather than in certain friendship groups or family groups it's don't change we like it as it is right there's conditions attached exactly, exactly. yeah 